businesses have two functions, innovation and marketing, and everything else is a cost center. And whilst for many of you who might be thinking about doing economics or accounting or anything else that we offer, as well as marketing, I really do hope that tonight that I can show you why marketing is amazing and why it's not what you think it is. A lot of times people, when they think of marketing, think, oh, well, I don't want to do advertising. Well, I'm not creative. I like processes. I like knowing where I am. And actually, marketing is more of a process than you think it is. Marketing is all about process. And what's even better is that marketing is this beautiful sweet spot between economics and psychology that brings it together in marketing. Marketing is responsible for growing businesses, for improving customer service, for developing products that actually meet the customer's needs. By understanding the role of the customer and the customer's needs and wants and desires and developing products and services to meet their needs, their actual needs, both communicated and uncommunicated, marketing is a really powerful tool for businesses and to drive growth. And likewise, the psychology side of things, whereas we need to understand how businesses and individuals make decisions. On the business to business side of things, we look at how businesses make decisions and actually it's not just one organization talking to another the reality is there's people in the middle of this and it's people who buy from people and understanding how those decisions are made why they make them the power dynamics within those decision making processes are all some of the things that we go through over the series of lectures within the units marketing is all about process so if you are one of those people who go i'm not creative don't worry as a marketer, there is such a broad church. There is performance marketing, there is marketing strategy, there is digital marketing, there's traditional marketing, there's advertising, there is everything in between. There's insights, there's data, there's analytics, there's so much within marketing that actually you can find your niche and it can be wherever you enjoy. So one of the things that Mark Ritson states is the route to marketing effectiveness is all about that process. First, you have to diagnose the situation. What's going on here? What is taking place? What's happening on in the external environment that's going to affect our industry? What industry are we in? OK, I know it sounds like a silly question, but you think about someone like Coke. Are they in the soft drinks industry? Are they in the carbonated drinks industry? Are they in the experience industry? Yeah. So you've got to think, what markets and industries are we in? What markets are we competing in and where are we strongest? So to do that, we need to carry out a diagnosis of what is going on in the environment, the external environment, internal environment, and the performance environment where the company competes amongst its competitors. Once we understand what's going on, only then can we develop the strategy. And the strategy is, what are we going to do? Okay, so we know what's going on. And then we need to know what we're going to do. And only then can we do the tactics. How are we going to get there? A lot of people think, oh, would you just jump straight into the tactics? Okay, the, this company doesn't have a website. It needs a website. It needs a social media strategy. Everyone's on social media. It's, it's clearly the right choice. But is it? By understanding who your customers are, where they are, how they consume media, how they make their choices, how they learn about products and services and how they make decisions, only then can you put your strategy in place to meet your customers where they are with products that they actually care about. And remember that marketing isn't just buying trainers and books and retail. It's not just transactional. The reality is marketing can be much more deeper and relationship driven. And actually, the more relationship a brand or a company can build with a customer, the less there is the likelihood of switching. So again, that moving away from those transactional relationships to those really deeply embedded collaborative relationships, long term relationships, is where companies like to be if they aren't in mass differentiated markets. So what companies tend to do is look at where they sit the diagnosis, that strategy, what is it that we need to do? Do we need to grow market share? Do we need to increase salience in a certain demographic? Do we need to carry out defensive marketing? If we're the market leaders, it's defensive marketing. How are we going to maintain our market share? And then what tactics are we going to use to do that? 
And all of these stages are multiplicitous. If you don't do a good diagnosis, your strategy will be almost worthless. And then the tactics that come out of that will be worthless because they'll just be wet finger in the air about what's going on. Likewise, your tactics can be 100%, but if there's no strategy behind it and there's no diagnosis has taken place, it's all gonna fall flat. So it's better to do just a decent diagnosis, a decent strategy and decent tactics because it's more likely to work. So like I said, marketing is all about process. And then what we do is we carry out an external audit. Once we understand what's going in our external environment, we then carry out our internal audit. What's going on within the organization? What's going on in the company? What's going on within our competitors, our supply chain, our customers? Once we understand those things, we bring them together in a summary. And this is where you can use models. We start to introduce models like the SWOT analysis. Or if you want to take it that little step further and bring in something a bit more tangible that actually can give you a direction to go into, you can go on to the TOES analysis. And again, we will go into far more depth in the lectures themselves. After that, we look at what the alternatives are. Like with any strategy, choosing what to do is just as important as choosing what not to do. Everything in life has a trade-off. Even watching this video, by choosing to watch this video, you're choosing not to do something else, right? And this may not be make or break of your day, but in a business, you, the choice to go with one agency over another could be quite large. To produce one product over another, release one feature over another, go down one campaign over another. Again, you're always making choices. Resources are very, very limited. And as such, you need to use them in a way that is going to have the most impact for your organization and achieve your organizational goals and objectives. So once you've identified what the alternatives are and you've weighed up what the best route is to go down, you evaluate them, okay? So you're weighing up, what is the best route? What is the opportunity cost? If we go this way, what are we forgoing by going another? Again, it's weighing up those pros and cons. You all do it instinctively, I'm sure. It's no different in business. Then we go on to implement it. And one would normally think that this is where it stops, right? We've done all the analysis, we've done all the strategy, we've implemented it, great. But what next? I propose that there's an extra step. And instead of it being a linear process one to the end, actually we need to then monitor it and iterate. Is this working? Is this having the effects that we're meant to have? Is the external environment reacting in the way or the customers reacting in a way that we were expecting? If not, what can we change? In startups, there's a lot of focus on failing fast because actually by understanding where you've gone wrong really, really quickly and failing fast, it enables you to identify where the mistakes have happened and correct them quickly. Likewise, if something's working, you can see what is working so that you can do more of that. This is a really quick overview of what we would cover in a session. So hopefully you understand a bit more about the process of marketing and hopefully we see you on the session and I'm really, really looking forward to meeting you all. See you in September. Bye.